All right, 2023 has started and we've shown off a lot of new guns, a lot of new M4s, but we're gonna do something different this year. All right, 2023 is gonna be the year of new stuff. And what's newer than a new, yeah, high cap, I know, yeah, I called it too. You called it too, we all knew it was coming. What's going on guys, Kevin here, and if you thought I was gonna talk about different platforms of guns, well, you're wrong, because this is a high kappa, and that's all they ever let me talk about. So, today we have the brand new TTI Sand Viper from Jag Arms. It is a high kappa, of course, and man, does it look Gucci. It looks beautiful. As with all TTI guns, though, you know, you come to expect this level of aesthetic, you know, nice enough for John Wick to use. So uh, if he uses it, you know, I guess I could use it too. You dare conflate yourself with the legendary Juan Wick? <laughs> Juan Julio Wick? So if you guys didn't know, the TTI Sand Viper is actually the bronze version of the TTI Pit Viper. And uh, as you can see, the bronze is a little bit on that more deeper chocolatey bronze. Quick tip from Boaz, if you're trying to achieve this color of bronze, just uh, toss whatever uh, metal part that you want, just toss it in the oven and it'll be Baked to perfection. Mm, baked to perfection. Sorry, what? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll mention that. Okay. Sorry, I uh, just got off the uh, phone with big man Terran Tactical himself. I'm sorry, the Sand Viper is not the bronze version of the Pit Viper. The Pit Viper actually has iron sights built into the slide, whereas the Sand Viper has an RMR plate on it. So I'm so sorry. So you know how this works. We're gonna talk about the external features, then the internal features, and then we're gonna see how it all comes together in a nice old package. So let's go ahead and start off with the external features. First off, it has all of the race gun accoutrements that you would expect. So we have the flared magwell, of course, for easy magazine insertion. We have a very nicely stippled grip. It does look hand stippled. It's not like those laser engraved or you know molded on grips. So uh, that looks really nice. We also have the RMR optics plate accompanying the slide and it does look very flush and clean. As you'll notice, there is no front side on here. So it's basically saying you either put on the RMR or you look flat. But I mean, you know, use speed softeners that don't use optics anyways. This is perfect for you. We have a, a nice uh, enlarged magazine release so you can uh, you know do those speed reloads without uh, any hiccups. We also have this beautiful slide right here that does come with a built-in compensator that is attached to the outer barrel. What this does in the real steel version is I'm assuming it'll lower recoil, but airsoft, we don't need to worry about that. But the looks does look pretty nice. We do have this nice angled cut as well in front uh, going through the slide and the lower frame. And low key, it kind of gives uh, deagle vibes, but uh, you know, to each their own. We do have a uh, rail on the bottom of the frame as well, so you can attach lights, lasers, foregrips, grenades, whatever you want. So one thing to note on this guy is that on the bottom rail, it is actually a single slot section instead of a full Picatinny section. So actually you cannot attach grenade launchers or foregrips or other accoutrements. If you wanted to attach a light, which we do recommend, this is the Bravo STL 800 flashlight on here. Uh, another quick note to make is the optics plate on the slide here accepts Dr. and RMR footprint optics. This one specifically is the Bravo Micro Red Dot. So if you wanted the whole package to look like this, we highly recommend it. On the trigger itself, it does have threads on the bottom of the trigger so you can insert your own grub screw so that you can adjust the length of trigger pull. And one quick note about the magazine that comes included, it is a Jag Arms magazine, high cap of magazine, so I mean, it works, it's great. But it does come with this Terran Tactical base plate that matches the color of the whole pistol itself. So you do get this very cohesive, matchy matchy look once you put it all together. And the last feature I wanna mention on this pistol is that the compensator does come threaded. Now, that means if you have an Ace Tech tracer or a Bravo tracer that has the pistol adapter for the tracer, you can screw it right on this bad boy right out of the box so this gun is tracer ready immediately. Now, does it look ugly? A little bit. Are you gonna use it? You probably will, because tracers are great. All right, now we're gonna dive into the internals of this gun, and as with all Jag High Kappas, you can expect that premium quality that they've been including in all of their high kappas. I have been honestly very impressed with all of their high kappa platforms, but internals on this one, exactly the same. So we do have the upgraded recoil spring, which does feel 
like a 120 to 130% recoil spring, so it makes it extra snappy, especially if you're running a micro red dot on here. You do need that extra strength to pull that extra weight, so that does help out a lot. Again, it is TM compatible on the inside as well, so if you wanted to upgrade your hop-up unit, blowback housing, things like that, you can. Again, I don't think you really need to. One important note to make is that the inner barrel in this guy does extend all the way to the edge of the comp. That's right, the edge of the comp, not the edge of the slide. So that means you are getting the full FPS value from this gun for being this long. The outer barrel does not move at all. It is a fixed outer barrel, so you don't have to worry about your inner barrel wobbling around in there. I think Jag Arms really did take the extra time and extra step to make sure that they took all of these things into consideration to make a beautifully performing high kappa. The Jag Arms Terran Tactical Sand Viper High Kappa chronos in at about 370 to 350 FPS using 0.20 gram BBs and green gas. And it has a rate of fire of, it's semi-auto, come on. Man, 370, oh, I really wanted to take this guy indoors. Unfortunately, most indoor fields uh, FPS limit is uh, 350, so sadly this guy will not be allowed in most fields. However, you can think of it as a very reliable and useful sidearm and outdoor play. And if you toss on a tracer, no, I'm just kidding. Please don't toss on a tracer for outdoor gameplay. I think the extra FPS is because the inner barrel extends all the way to the edge of the compensator. So if you wanted to bring it in indoors, you would have to get a shorter inner barrel. But uh, yeah, I really wanted to play with this indoors. You can! The secret ingredient is crime! No, 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 no. We're, we're not allowed to say that. No, no. We can't do that. All right, guys, we are out here on our virtual range and I am checking out the uh, TTI Sand Viper. We're gonna put it through a race course because it is designed after a race pistol. So let's go ahead and see how it performs. We have two O-Gram BBs and green gas and we're indoors. Let's run it. Let me say, this is a very, very enjoyable gun. It shoots so smooth. Again, Jack Arms knowing what they're doing with this pistol and whew, it feels so good. That was actually a really good time. I'm pretty impressed with myself. 7.9 is the time to beat. Let's go ahead and run it back. Oh, here we go. Stand by. Oh, almost flawless run. What time did I get? Oh, 6.38. Man, this, this pistol feels really nice. You know what I'm really surprised about is how smooth and fast this slide cycles back. Normally with RMR um, footprint slides, the RMR or the micro red dot adds a little bit of extra weight to the cycling speed. But this guy with that upgraded recoil spring really pushes forward that slide extremely fast. It makes it for a very responsive shooting experience. The trigger is a little bit stiffer than I wanted, but the reset is super crisp. And man, the aggressiveness on this stippling, man, it really keeps it steady in my hands as I'm shooting. All right, we're gonna try out the accuracy on this pistol just to see how much the extended inner barrel affects accuracy. So we are having a zeroing target a little bit in front of us, I would say maybe 10 feet away. And the uh, center target is a little bit small, so it is a little difficult to hit. So we're gonna aim center mass and see how we perform. Okay, so I've got my red dot aimed right at center mass, and I'm just gonna keep aiming there and shooting, okay? All right, so there was a little bit of a shift to the right. Honestly, I think that was because I didn't correctly zero it all the way. Um, but once I shifted a little to the right and just kept it there, the grouping was actually really, really tight. So uh, let's see if we can do that again. I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to the micro red dot and then get it nice and zeroed. We'll do it again. I corrected the zero to make sure it's nice and on point. Now we're gonna do a quick mag dump on target. I'll still be aiming center mass with this guy and shooting a little bit faster, okay? Here we go. And... Woo! 
Wow, that gripping is nice and tight now that we have it nice and zeroed. Boaz here with the very new TTI Sand Viper high cap. Oh, it just looks so good in that bronze, man. So great. And, you know, Kevin, he just makes it look so delicious, so scrumptious. You know, I gotta give it a try myself, all right? All right, Kevin with the targets. Easy clap, all right? He can't do nothing on, on me. It's rigged, bro. It's rigged. It's rigged. Kevin, you rigged it. You rigged it. All right, I just came back from shooting the TTI Sand Viper, and I must say it was a very enjoyable experience. Uh, Jag Arms really does take their time when designing these TTI high cappas, and the Sand Viper is no exception. It was extremely smooth to use, and all of the additional features that were included on the gun really helped with that experience. Using a micro red dot especially was a very unique experience just because the Sand Viper has a very clean top section. There's no iron sights to get in your way, so you can acquire your uh, sight very fast. The Sand Viper was designed as a race pistol or inspired by race pistols, and I definitely felt it when I was using it. So this gun shoots great, it looks great. You're probably on the fence about it. I'm probably on the fence about it. I actually am on the fence about it because, you know, I, I have a built out high kappa already. So, you know, I can't be spending extra money on pistols. However, the TTI Sand Viper does come in at $200 at airsoftgi.com. And be sure to use the Wamba combo for the best savings in airsoft. Man, $200 for this guy, that's that's actually honestly a steal. That's around the same price as like a gold match TM high kappa. Uh, and the TM high kappa is gonna be plastic. This guy is full metal, fully upgraded, uh, and pretty much looks like an aftermarket built pistol already. I'm actually pretty salty because they didn't have these back in when I was starting to build my pistol. I would have saved a lot of money, but um, hey, save yourself the trouble. Pick up one of these bad boys. All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out our overview of the Jag Arms TTI Sand Viper. Now, Jag Arms has been pumping out these amazing high kappas, so well built. Honestly, I am uh, contemplating why I even own a custom built high kappa because I'd rather by this guy. But uh, anyways, if you guys like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as hitting the bell icon to be notified of whenever we upload new content. Also be sure to use the Wama combo to be saving a bunch of money in Airsoft. Please just use it, all right? Uh, anyways, this is Kevin. I'll see you guys next time. Boaz, would you please buy my hand cap? No! Please, I need, I need the money. No, I already pre-ordered the Sand Viper. I'm not backing out of that.